Today we're going to take a closer look at the Fabricator Mini version 1.5 from Hobby King, the cheapest ready to run 3D printer you can currently buy. Is it any good? Is it a waste of money? Let's find out. Hello and welcome back to Maker's Muse. So the Fabricator Mini made waves on Hobby King mid last year as an exceptionally low cost 3D printer based off the open source Tiny Boy design with a few tweaks. I need to clarify that the Fabricator Mini, while based off the Tiny Boy, is actually very different and uses different firmware. So sorry for confusing anyone in my unboxing video. However, just as it started to become popular, it mysteriously became out of stock for good and many thought that this was the end of the super budget 3D printer. However, just a few weeks ago, some people noticed it had returned to Hobby King, this time sporting the version 1.5 name. It seems that instead of pulling a popular product down for good, Hobby King decided to take it down, make improvements and put it back up again for sale at the same low price as before. An awesome move by Hobby King, in my opinion. So what's so special about the Fabricator Mini and why am I so excited about this tiny, tiny 3D printer? For a start, let's look at the price. 178 bucks US or $254 Australian. Yes, our dollar is terrible at the moment and I know this doesn't include shipping, but even shipped, the Fabricator Mini cost me 320 Australian landed, which puts it in the realm of the cheapest i3 kits you can buy of sketchy AliExpress sellers. Let me know in the comments if there's any other fully assembled 3D printers at this price point that you know of. And please don't say anything like the Tico or other Kickstarter printers that haven't actually shipped to backers. I mean, real world printers you can buy right now. I'd love to know if there's anything else like this. The printer comes well packaged in a sturdy box with custom CNC cut foam packaging and you get included with the printer the power adapter, a very short USB cable, quite a decent instruction manual and the extremely silly two feet sample of PLA filament. You will 100% need to buy additional filament to even complete a test print so be sure to grab some from Hobby King or elsewhere when you order your printer. In terms of print specs, the Fabricator Mini sports a spacious 80 by 80 by 80 millimeter build volume, although realistically it's more like 70 by 70 by 80 millimeters. It has an E3D clone hot end with a Bowden style extruder setup and a very beefy NEMA 17 stepper motor and an all metal assembly. The chassis is made from laser cut 3mm acrylic which has been joined together with specially designed injection molded fasteners. This is one of the major improvements over version 1 of the Fabricator Mini. I wasn't really a fan of the t nut and T-slot method of assembling the original Fabricator Mini so the injection molded parts that now they use to assemble it is definitely a really good upgrade and I really appreciate it. But just how did Hobby King get this printer's price point so low? Well, along with the laser cut design, everything is designed with budget in mind. For example, the movement axes have bronze bushings rather than linear bearings and everything is very hobby sized. Fancy that. The movement axes are actually driven by very adorable NEMA 14 motors, which are much smaller than the regularly used NEMA 17s. It makes the fabricator smaller, lighter and cheaper while still having enough power to drive its very small print bed. I've also noticed that these motors seem to be quieter than your run of the mill NEMA 17s and it's also worth noting they do seem to run very hot. So be careful around them as well as the hot end during your print. And the print bed, like the frame, it's constructed from three millimeter acrylic and as such, it's not heated, which means the Fabricator Mini is primarily a PLA only machine, but not quite because Chuck on his channel has proven on the Fabricator Mini he has, you can print ABS using a build tack surface and the right settings. Normally making a print bed from acrylic would be a terrible idea in my opinion, but again, this printer is just so small, any inaccuracies caused by the plastic construction would be so tiny you just don't notice. This design wouldn't really be possible much larger than its current build volume as you start to introduce flex issues, tolerance issues, and as such you'd have to increase rigidity which adds cost and weight and so on. The Fabricated Mini really is a complete sweet spot of cost and functionality. Other improvements to this version include heat sinks on the motor drivers which should have been there in the first place and these little feet that raise the printer up and allow airflow to the motor drivers on the control board. Speaking of the control board, it's a remix of the Arduino Mega and Ramps 1.4 known as MKS Base which has been mixed into one board. It works well enough and even has the option to control a second extruder and heated bed. Hmm. While I don't think you'll be adding a second extruder to your Fabricator Mini anytime soon, it would really be cool if you want to reuse these parts in future projects. It also has the ability to add an SD card and LCD control interface, something I will be doing to my Fabricator Mini very soon. Those feet though, they look pretty, but to be honest, they're pretty useless. You see, if you ever move the printer, which I do quite often to change the filament, the feet don't come with it, and it takes a lot of effort to position them into place. 
they're a bit of an afterthought. In my opinion, I'll probably replace them with something that the community's generated, which actually is a 3D printed foot that snugly attaches to the base of the printer instead of trying to use these clunky acrylic things. To control the printer as it comes from Hobby King, you need to tether it to a computer during printing. I followed the instructions in the instruction manual and I installed Repetia. However, at the time, I was trying to use a very old XP machine, which gave me a lot of issues. I hunted down the correct drivers and got it printing. However, it kept throwing up errors mid-print, causing the print to fail and the Repetia to crash. I eventually decided to try my Surface Pro 3 instead, which has Windows 8.1 installed and the drivers installed perfectly, although I did already have Arduino installed and since changing to the Surface Pro, I haven't had any issues with printing while tethering. But again, I do dislike tethering as it means your computer must be on the, for the entire duration of the print and it adds another source of failure. However, this is just another way Hobby King was able to reduce the cost of the Fabricator Mini and the reasoning is probably, hey, everyone has an old computer lying around, why don't they use it? So I'm okay with that if it means they got the printer to the lower price point that they've achieved. I will also again be upgrading to an SD card and LCD interface, as I mentioned, ASAP. So it sounds like pretty smooth sailing, right? Well, in true Maker's Muse fashion, it wasn't. <laughs> in fact, I managed to create an extruder jam within minutes of heating the extruder head up for the first time and attempting an extrude. I'm still not entirely sure what caused it, but it may have had something to do with my extruder motor rotating the wrong way. That's right, from the factory, my Fabricator Mini's extruder motor was turning backwards and it was withdrawing when it should have been extruding and I have no idea why. I had to source the firmware, many thanks to Chuck for hosting the files on his website, so I sourced the files from there. Then I navigated to the line in the firmware which allowed me to reverse the direction of the extruder motor. Normally this is done to change between a geared and a direct drive extruder. So I changed it, reflashed to the Replicator Mini and it started working fine. So if I came across this issue, no doubt some of you will experience the same problem. So I will definitely do a very small tutorial on how to reflash and reverse that motor yeah, very shortly. So in case you run into that trouble, I can help you fix it quickly. Sure, you could swap the coil wires, but as the motor comes well wired to a plug and you can't easily swap the plug around, it was going to cause a lot of issues and I didn't want to get the soldering iron out so it's easier to fix some firmware. Oh well. Alrighty then, so if you've made it this far, well done. You must really want to know how well this extremely low cost printer actually prints. Well, here you go. I am blown away with the quality of the Fabricator Mini in PLA. The parts are clean, the parts are accurate, and the layer accuracy is sharp. It's, it's not the fastest machine on the market, by far with the suggested print settings, but the prints are nice, they look nice, they look good. And they put my wenhao, to be honest, they put my wenhao to shame. But my wenhao's not very good. In fact, I decided to try my torture test on it, which is actually too tall to fit into the Fabricator Mini's build volume, so I thought, Okay, I don't know, let's scale it down to fit. Here's the result of my torture test scaled down to fit into the volume of the Fabricator Mini. The text is incredibly well detailed, readable and sharp, considering every letter is only about 6 millimeters high and this is printed at 200 micron layer height with 200 degrees and eSun PLA. Without active cooling, you can see the printer struggles a bit with bridging and printing the peak cleanly, but this would be a dead easy fix with a desk fan or even just a 12 volt computer fan mounted to the side of the machine. Definitely an upgrade I will be doing in the future. So in case you haven't noticed, the Fabricator Mini has me excited, more so than I have been over 3D printers for a long time. I feel that 3D printing should be accessible to anyone, and sure, it can't print big, it can't print fast, but get this, for the cost of a single Ultimaker 2 Plus, you can buy between 11 and 12 Fabricator Minis. That's enough for every kid in the classroom to have one, take home and learn about design and manufacturing in a really hands-on way. Many school systems around the world have already managed to put a laptop into the hands of their students, so why not go that extra step and give them all a printer as well? I mean, STEM is a huge buzzword at the moment, and this little 3D printer really fits into that whole philosophy perfectly. So there you have it guys, the Fabricator Mini version 1.5. Good things really do come in small packages sometimes. So, full disclaimer, Hobby King has paid me nothing for this review. In fact, I doubt Hobby King even knows I exist. Do not expect much in the way of personalized support from Hobby King directly for the Fabricator Mini. However, there is already a strong community around the original, as well as some decent videos produced by Hobby King on YouTube. And with version 1.5, I think that community will only continue to grow. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more future 3D printing content here on Makers Muse, don't forget to subscribe and give us a like. 
Makers Muse is a 100% independent source of 3D printing reviews, tutorials, and projects and relies on awesome people like you to survive. Consider supporting the channel through our Amazon affiliate links or even a direct donation through YouTube. It really helps and it's always appreciated. Let me know in the comments what you think of this tiny thing. I mean, do you think it's a practical 3D printer or do you think it's just way too small for your liking? I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Fabricator Mini version 1.5. So happy 3D printing guys. I'll see you again shortly here on Maker's Muse. Bye.